Hi, we're talking about the nitrogen cycle today, and we're talking about it because it's everyone's favorite cycle. I know how much everyone loves the nitrogen cycle. Every pupil says, sir, sir, can we do the nitrogen cycle today? You know how much we love it. So, hey, good news, we're gonna do the nitrogen cycle on this video today. This is our big diagram of the nitrogen cycle. We've taken it from the OCR A2 textbook. Thank you very much, OCR A2 textbook. Uh, and it's a really good flowchart this it takes in all of the main processes that we need to know about and it's got all the arrows in the right places it's got color coding great for those who aren't colorblind so let's start off at the top with nitrogen gas in the air up here there is an enormous reservoir of nitrogen in the air in the form n2 the trouble is that it's extremely unreactive it's extremely unreactive because of the triple bond between the nitrogen atoms this triple bond means that it's just difficult to get those nitrogens apart. And there are only really three significant ways in which this happens. And that and those nitrogen atoms are made usable. Those three ways are lightning. <coughs> That's my lightning special effect for you. Lightning, the harbor process, and enzymes in nitrogen fixing bacteria. And that is by far the most ecologically significant of those three ways. Why is this so important? Well, ultimately, it's so that we can make these. This is an amino acid, and these are the building blocks of proteins. You can see the elements involved in it. It's got, of course, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, as do all biological molecules. But in addition, it has nitrogen, and we need to get hold of those nitrogens from somewhere, and ultimately, all the nitrogens in the proteins of your body, indeed, the, the proteins which are currently being used to listen to my voice and to watch the very screen that you're watching now, those proteins have nitrogen atoms in them which have previously been in the atmosphere and have gone through one or many bacteria, indeed, countless bacteria in the billions of years this has all been going on. So... That's the big picture. If you wanted a big picture, there it is. Let's trace our nitrogen along. We start off up here, N2 gas. Off we go. Nitrogen fixation by bacteria in the soil. And that gives us organic nitrogen in the soil. Why so? Well, because bacteria in the soil ultimately will die. They themselves will rot down. And so they uh, end up putting organic nitrogen in the soil. These nitrogen-fixing bacteria, they grab hold of those nitrogen atoms and they make their own proteins with them. They're very clever, awesomely clever. Well done. We praise you for your cleverness. Well done, nitrogen-fixing bacteria. It's worth just saying how amazing enzymes are. The harbour process, massive pressure, high temperatures, catalysts required, and, and just bacterial enzymes do it. Nothing like that. They do it at pretty cold soil temperatures with atmospheric pressure so yeah enzymes very clever molecules so we've got organic nitrogen in the soil where do we go from there well we have this process here this green arrow decomposition and ammonification ammonification so that's producing ammonium or nh4 plus again i've excelled myself on underlining words i've crossed them out rather than underlined them i'll rub that out just now there we go done and you didn't even notice did you so we've got as far as ammonia. Now, what else can give us ammonia? Well, we've got excretion here, which can also give us ammonia. Um, excretion, in particular, of urea. This uh, molecule here, urea, that is the form of nitrogenous excretion by animals. Uh, in particular, mammals produce a lot of urea. Uh, other animals also produce other things. I mean, we produce them as well. Insects will mainly produce uric acid and freshwater fish will in particular produce just ammonia directly uh, but mammals we produce a lot of urea uh, that's urea there you can see how much nitrogen there is in there uh, here is a urinating cow i just yeah there you go that's a cow producing urine which contains urea so urea is fairly chemically similar molecule to ammonia. Uh, in fact, it's just carbon and oxygen with a couple of ammonia stuck onto it. Uh, and so that's quickly broken down to ammonium. Ammonium itself can actually, you can see here, can actually be absorbed by plants. It can be absorbed by active transport. But let's carry on the picture anyway. Because we're at 
this stage here, NH4+. Now you can uh, think, of course, about the oxidative state of the nitrogens in NH4+. This is a nitrogen atom with a lot of hydrogens attached to it, so therefore it is a very heavily reduced nitrogen atom. Well, if you've got a very heavily reduced nitrogen atom, that means what you can do is you can get some energy by oxidizing it. And that's what these nitrifying bacteria will do. We've got two sets of nitrifying bacteria. This first one, Nitrosomonas, and this second one, Nitrobacter. This is going to be the world's worst uh, memory aid, but here we go. Uh, I remember these by the order, the chronological order of two very famous popular music acts. Um, I think Nitrosomonas sounds a little bit like Nina Simone. Uh, and uh, Okay, so we can remember Nina Simone is there. And then Nitrobacter, well, a little bit like the Backstreet Boys. Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, but Nina Simone, of course, comes chronologically before the Backstreet Boys and Nitrosomonas comes before the Nitrobacter in the nitrogen cycle also. So we've gone from ammonium, NH4+, plus, it's heavily reduced nitrogen. We've oxidized that to NO2 minus. Uh, nitrosominus has taken some energy from it, so we would call nitrosominus a chemoautotroph. Uh, autotroph meaning takes small inorganic molecules and using energy from another source, uses those small inorganic molecules to uh, make large organic molecules. And then nitrobacter, well, NO2 minus, there is another little bit of oxidation that can happen, another little bit of energy is going to be harvested from that, and so we get NO3 minus nitrates. You've got to remember that nitrifying bacteria, this process of nitrification, doing this process of nitrification, these nitrifying bacteria are not doing it for the benefit of the nitrogen cycle, they couldn't care less. They are doing it for themselves, they're doing it to gain energy, they are chemoautotrophs, and by happy result, uh, you might say, you might give other explanations as well, of course, those nitrates produced can then be absorbed by plants and plant roots. So, so we're at the nitrate stage just here. One thing that can happen is leaching. If it rains a lot, then you can get a lot of nitrates washing into rivers and streams, and that can lead to eutrophication. I'm going to write that at the top. U Eutrophication. Uh, what's the best a classic GCSE topic, isn't it? Eutrophication of fresh water. There's probably some sort of video on it somewhere, not sure. Okay, so we're at nitrates now. And these nitrates, here we go. Absorption by plant roots. La 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 la. And along we go. Up this way. There, there we go. And that is going to be by active transport because it's going to be uphill against the concentration gradient it's going to require energy it's going to require energy from respiration therefore will require oxygen in the soil uh, another reason we need oxygen in the soil uh, of course these oxidations by uh, nitrosominus and nitrobacter they will require oxygen to be in the soil as well you're going to have to have aerobic soil you can't do this in anoxic conditions so active transport into the plant roots and we end up with organic nitrogen in plants. So that's protein and nucleic acids in particular. Okay, well that organic nitrogen in plants, that's going to be eaten. We're going to get organic nitrogen in animals. And then we've got a our urinating cow again. Thank you, you can go. So that is the basics of the cycle. We've got a cycle now, haven't we? We've got it moving around. We've got a bit of, oh, we haven't said about death, have we? So we've got a bit of death going on. Um, that's gonna put organic nitrogen in the soil and around and around we go. A few more little details to put in and we're done. These are root nodules. These are root nodules of a pea plant. And what's going on here? Well. The pea plant, like other leguminous plants, allows itself to get infected by bacteria. But it's no bad thing for the plant because it's infected by these rhizobium bacteria. And these rhizobium bacteria have a particular ability. They too are nitrogen-fixing 
bacteria. And so it allows this infection to occur. Uh, what's in it for the bacteria? Well, the bacteria are gonna get supplied by the plant with glucose. Now you gotta remember, plants are just superb at making carbohydrates. They stick their leaves out, they catch light, and they use it to make glucose from carbon dioxide and water, and that's amazing. Don't lose sight of how amazing that is. And so the bacteria, they get a ready supply of glucose and they say, that's great, thank you. And the bacteria, uh, what's their part in this deal? Are they just freeloading on the plant? Well, no, they are providing the plant with fixed nitrogen. It's worth saying what fixed means in this context. Fixed means we take a gas and we turn it into useful, usable molecule. So we take nitrogen gas in this case and turn it into ammonia or nitrates or protein. That is us fixing those nitrogen atoms. There are little details though to go alongside this picture. The rhizobium bacteria make ammonia. Ammonia is NH3. Now we've already discussed how reduced the nitrogen atoms are in ammonia. How are you going to get N to go to H3? Well, as, as we're obviously going to have to get a whole load of hydrogens in there. I, you know, I'm not trying to balance anything up here, but we're going to get nitrogens, we're going to get hydrogens. Um, that's meant to say 3H. And the thing that's going to most interfere with this process is a gas which inhibits reduction. And what's that gas? That gas is oxygen. If there is too much oxygen hanging about, then this process of reducing nitrogen to ammonia won't happen. That leads to this wonderful adaptation that pea and other leguminous plants have. You can see, I hope, this gorgeous pinky colour of the root nodules. That's no accident. That pinky colour is leg haemoglobin. This leg haemoglobin is there to lock away oxygen. Now, we know that haemoglobin binds oxygen. That's great. So does leg haemoglobin, but leg haemoglobin binds onto oxygen and doesn't let it go. And this means that the conditions inside the root nodules are anoxic, which means we don't have the inhibition of the reduction of nitrogen to ammonia. One last little detail over here, denitrification by bacteria. This completes the cycle because at the moment we haven't really had a cycle at all. We've just had a one-way ticket from nitrogen gas in the air into the soil and then we're cycling it around the soil a little bit but ultimately it's a one-way ticket and if that had been the case then obviously by now there would be no nitrogen gas in the air. We kind of think of that as being maybe a good thing because we've made all the nitrogen useful and that would mean there's a higher concentration of oxygen and maybe that would make life easier. Well, of course, we know that things would then burn very easily and that would be dangerous. So we're pretty glad that there's quite a lot of nitrogen gas in the air because it means things don't just flash burn. But also, there is this issue about recycling the nitrogen. Now, if there were no denitrification, and what do we mean by that? We mean taking nitrates, taking NO3 minus and converting them into N2 gas. If there were none of that going on, then all this nitrogen would be locked up in living things, but actually mainly in dead things. We'd just have it locked up in the soil, buried under hundreds of meters, kilometers of rock. And so the nitrogen would be locked away. We wouldn't access it at all. So denitrification is really very needed by ecosystems. Why does it happen? Well, this is a little aside. You can see here we've got our heavily oxidized nitrogen atom. And here we've got our, well, it's not reduced, but it's not oxidized either, nitrogen N2 gas. What happens is, Again, in very anoxic soils, denitrifying bacteria, unable to get hold of oxygen, they've got to somehow get oxidizing power from somewhere. If they're going to do 
an equivalent of aerobic respiration, they've got to have some, let, let's just call it a source of oxygen. They've got to have a source of oxygen, a source of oxidizing power. Where do they get this from? Well, they get this from this ridiculously over-oxidized nitrogen atom of nitrates. So they kind of steal the oxygen away from the nitrogen and nitrates, use it for respiration, and then release the N as gas. Now, I, that, that's a, it's about a, many steps to do this, and I'm grossly oversimplifying, so please don't leave horrible comments saying, and then he said... Um, but that's what it does. It takes, they take these denitrifying bacteria, they take the oxygen away from nitrates and use it themselves for the equivalent of aerobic respiration. And that returns nitrogen from the soil to the atmosphere, which actually is no bad thing. It's not a great thing if you're a farmer and you want to have a massive yield of crops. No, but overall, it's a great thing because it does mean we keep nitrogen gas in the air where we need it. So in summary, you should be thinking about soil conditions all the way through. You should be thinking about uh, what uh, processes are encouraged by aerobic soil, what processes are encouraged by anoxic soil. You should be thinking about the one, two, three, four, five types of bacteria we've got here. So nitrogen fixing, two types of them, two types of nitrifying bacteria and decomposing bacteria. And just try to understand it. If you understand it, it becomes so much easier to learn and to remember. Thanks. I hope that helps.